I live in Fairfax, Virginia, and have lived here about 45 years in the, in the current home. My wife and I have been married about 57 years. We met on a blind date. Chuck happened to have an Austin Healey, which was a little uh, convertible and was very, um, very popular then. He always said that I married him for his car. At any rate, we got married. And we've been married ever since. I uh, moved here back in 1977. At the time, I was in the Navy um, and uh, stationed at the Pentagon. He's definitely a military father. He's very much a, a rule-following kind of person, but also then you layer on this goofy personality. Actually, when I think about it, the trombone is a, really a good instrument to play. Yeah, you've got trumpets, you've got baritones, you've got French horns, you've got saxophones, clarinets, but trombone has got a nice mellow tone to it. He still plays that trombone in the band, and that at times can be very difficult. Um, but he just goes at it because he really enjoys it, and he he um, is keeping going. I think the very best that anybody could. I wasn't surprised when I actually found out. I was a smoker. And that amounted to approximately 60 years of smoking. I was worried so much about getting cancer that I cut myself back to about two cigarettes a day uh, for, I was, about six months, uh, but then they discovered the mass, and uh, once I was told that, uh, I haven't had a cigarette since. My name is Chuck, and I've been diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer. Lung cancer is a cancer that develops in the lung itself. There's two major kinds, small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. Of course, there are minor variants, but those are the two major, major types. Non-small cell is broken down into adenocarcinoma, squamous cell, and others. Most people in the United States have adenocarcinoma, and that's the most common kind. Non-small cell lung cancer is all diagnosed on tissue. To pick it up with KRAS or any targetable mutation, you have to do the test. You can actually do the test on tissue. So you take a sample of the tissue, which is what we traditionally do. Technology's gotten really cool because cancer sheds DNA. The cells die, and they shed your DNA. So you can actually measure broken down DNA in the blood and get the results simply from doing a blood test. We went to Yellowstone, we're enjoying the trip. He was absolutely fine, everything, and, and, and so the next several days, we went along with the group with what we were doing, but I did notice that he had to periodically stop and take a rest. Uh, I couldn't breathe, and I had trouble walking very far before I got out of breath. Ended up at a uh, local clinic at the uh, Old Faithful uh, site there in Yellowstone, and they, uh, to make a long story short, they took an x-ray and thought they saw something in my lung. Since they saw something on an x-ray and that's all they had available at the clinic, they took me to Idaho uh, by ambulance uh, 
to uh, have a CT scan done, which was done, and the doctor at the hospital in Idaho said, yes, there's something in your lung. He called it a mass in my right lung and suggested I cut my tour with the uh, Yellowstone group uh, short, go home, talk to my doctor and find out what's going on. So we get a call from my mom that, oh, we're, you know, we're coming home and dad, she didn't say dad has cancer because of course it wasn't an official diagnosis yet, but he has a spot on his lung. And we went home and we called the doctor, called our internist right away. And he suggested a couple of cancer doctors. This doctor that I initially saw was a surgeon and he evaluated my situation as a uh, having stage three lung cancer, non-operable. And he sent me over to the Virginia cancer specialist and um, I got to see Dr. Spira and uh, that's when he immediately put me on chemo and radiation and then the immune therapy. Lung cancer traditionally over the years has been, uh, uh, in my th way of thinking, uh, pretty much a death sentence. So when I knew I had lung cancer, I wasn't sure what was going to be next. Uh, I think probably for me was there was a lot of denial. Um, I had a very delayed reaction. Oh. I think your brain just lets you know things a little <laughs> bit out of a time, you know, so that you can in manageable chunks. And so yeah. I think that right away you just learn to be in the moment. So, okay, so what are we going to do? That was my reaction. What, what's an early sign of lung cancer? Yeah, there's a lot. It's cough, it's shortness of breath, it's a little tickle in your throat, it's a little bit of chest pain and achiness. The problem is that can be from anything as much as a cold or a virus that doesn't go away. So those are the big uh, ones that people see. That's why it's silent. Why don't we catch lung cancer when it's early? There's still not a good screening test. You know, prostate cancer, there's a test, a PSA test. We all know about mammograms. But with lung cancer, it's tough. There has been data that getting screening CAT scans in patients with a large history of smoking actually does help. The other thing is, of course, there's more and more non-smokers. Most people actually in my clinic now never smoked or had very little smoking history, not what you typically would assume. And that's changed a lot. And unfortunately, the lungs are big organs. And by the time you have a symptom, it can be too late. Chuck started in with um, his regimen of treatment, which was chemo and radiation. Um, concurrently. And he completed that in several months' time, and then he went on a year of immunotherapy infusions. He completed um, his treatment, and he had about 15 months where he was in good health um, until um, the cancer came back. That is what Chuck diagnosed you know, at stage four before he even knew it. Um, Chuck, in fact, had early stage and then it returned, and he had no idea. I was the one to tell him. After one of my routine scans, my doctor informed me that the cancer was back and it no longer was curable. It could be treated, uh, but not curable. He used the term, and I'm not sure that Chuck even, even heard it, to be honest with you, but he used the term living with cancer. And that's exactly what we've been doing. I really never thought of it that way. But I think, the, I think the important word is the living. I think out of that statement is the living and he is living it the best he can. I just admire him, he doesn't complain or anything about it, he just goes and he does it. Sometimes I wish he would complain because he says he doesn't worry about stuff but I know that he does because how can you not? Chuck's a pretty like, even keel kind of a guy. So when I told Chuck, he was like, okay, it's fine, what do we do next? He was a very practical kind of a guy. And then you always envision you walk out the room and what's the conversation that night with his wife? How are they figuring it out? Let me see how many points I had. We're just going forward the best that we can. And hopefully we still have a lot of time together. I just feel if you let go of hope, then you go a different path. And I, just feel we're going to do whatever we can do so long as Chuck wants to do it. And at that time, they discovered um, 
this mutation, and we started learning about biomarkers and terms that were all foreign to us. In precision medicine, these drugs are literally designed to turn off a target. He mentioned that, you know, he was not a surgical candidate, but that he could definitely be treated. Hi, my name is Barbara, and I've been diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer. My mother is a very active woman. I would always say that she never seemed her age. Um, she just had a lot of youthful energy, and um, everyone loves her. I'm still working. I'm past 80 years old and I have a very high-end travel business. And I enjoy it. I've been doing it for years and years. I have six grandchildren. They're lovely. And I care about them and they care about me. My mother does meditation and I think it's been really helpful for her every night when she goes to bed. She hasn't been wanting to talk too deeply about this whole cancer diagnosis from the beginning. She just sort of has been pushing through, and I don't know if that's been helping her, but she just kind of like plugs ahead, and what's next, what's next, what's next, and I think that's been helping. <laughs> I probably smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. Well, it's interesting because when, when I stopped smoking, well, I started at 13 and then I stopped at like 39. I guess there was a problem, but I thought at 39, I'm finished. I'm never going to smoke another cigarette again. We didn't know anything. My list of symptoms are extreme fatigue, tiredness. Not what I'm used to. I'm used to being a very active person, you know, working out all the time, dancing a lot, taking four cruises a year. And now all that has changed, especially since I have a husband who has dementia, which to me is very sad. Very tough. I, am, I must say, it's been very tough for my mom to deal with her husband's dementia. I, I, part of me almost thinks that it's been more difficult for her to deal with that than it is for her to deal with her own diagnosis. Although I think it's harder seeing somebody else go through something than something with yourself. I started to tell him, and as soon as he heard the cancer word, he got very upset. So he remembers that I had what he calls pimples on my brain, that I had that the brain uh, tumors removed. We didn't notice anything until it was the pandemic. And then, so for maybe about a month, she had this different personality where she just, her voice changed, her affect changed. And then she had this fall. I was in Costco, and I was coming home, and all the apples fell out of the bag. And I, I started uh, picking up apples in my apartment. And the next thing I knew is that I had broken my nose. And we saw her over FaceTime, and she had black eyes, and, just, and she was just smiling and giggling the whole time. She was telling us a story, and we're like, this is not right. They were in Florida, we were all out of state, 
and somehow we got them into a car and they got to the hospital and that's when they did a scan of her brain and saw the tumor. And that's when they discovered it was lung cancer. So many cancers go to the brain. Lung cancer just has a predominance of doing so, probably because it's a more aggressive cancer. When we first heard the news, it was just shocking. Um, because again, she had been just such a healthy, she took vitamins all the time, she exercised all the time. She just, it just came out of nowhere. It was very shocking. Well, first they, they tried chemo, it didn't work. My body just fell apart. Then they, then they tried targeted radiation, and that didn't work. The chemotherapy did not work at all. The immunotherapy she tried first, they actually thought she was gonna be a really good candidate for the immunotherapy because her KRAS 12 mutation, so he felt really good about that, but it did not work. Just, she didn't do well with that. But what these mutations are is abnormalities in a specific gene. And that specific gene is, we call it a driver mutation. And what it does is it turns on the cancer cell. And if it turns on the cancer cell, it causes that cell to replicate. If you can target that gene, the cancer cell goes off. And that's why it's important to test because it's a very simple concept. Gene X, for example, now is a gene that's overexpressed and it's turning on the cancer cell. I don't know how anyone would go through something like this without having like an advocate or somebody helping you to navigate the process because it's just, there's so much to deal with and I just don't see even medicines, doctors, visits, you know, scans, um, the emotional support, everything. I just can't imagine how you would navigate that. So I think it's been really important for her to have us, you know, my brother's been supportive in his own way. He's far away, but he calls all the time and he's there for her. But for us, we've been Melody and myself and her other Steph, who's another um, stepdaughter-in-law, um, we've all been here for her, you know, physically in person. So it's been amazing. It's hugely important to have friends and support groups or whatever your village is. You want to be celebrating things with your family. It's hugely, hugely important. And unfortunately, many of our patients need caregivers. I mean, being a patient is hard. Can you imagine if she didn't have the support and loved ones of her daughter? It's the physical support and it's the emotional support. So you need that as well. And patients do better as well. It's important. It's important to know that you're loved and you're going to be taken care of. I have felt for years that the support system cancer patient has at home is huge. I've lost a number of friends to cancer and I've seen the differences in, in their situations. And I'm a firm believer that if you have a good support system, whether it's blood relatives, a family, or just close friends, clergy, um, a teacher, um, whoever it might be, that um, it, is, it is hugely support, I feel, in the whole um, recovery. Or, or maybe recovery isn't right the word, uh, tolerance of the treatments and getting through some difficult times that I feel your support system is one of the most important things that you have. And I feel that our family has been hugely supportive of Chuck. And the kids want to know whenever he has an appointment what's going on and um, how he is. And um, they're always sending him well wishes. And uh, we are very, very fortunate with our children, grandchildren, and the three little ones. The youngest is only seven months old, but she seems to love Papa. She's just taking a liking to him right away. And I pretty much say everything's a green light, it's a go, except for one, stamina. Stamina has been a bugaboo with me. I play pickleball, I play one game. I used to be able to play four games in a row. I play one game now, I have to sit down. I call that stamina, and Dr. Spira tells me it's because I have cancer.
Okay. I'm uh, almost 83 years old. I think I can handle it. He's doing great. Sometimes I think maybe he's doing better than me because <laughs> I'll have my little ailments that I'll complain about. He's not a complainer at all. Chuck's really doing great. No, that's his 2001. She is doing that's his. not as well as she was. She has had some regression. Today, my health is like this. Um, when they stop shrinking the tumor, it goes back up to the brain, and now I've, I've got it in the brain. So I have to do radiation for the brain. What is my prognosis today? I don't know, I'm, I'm still an optimist. They're gonna shrink all these tumors in my brain. So I'm just, I'm just an optimist. Anyway, I wanna plan a trip to Italy, so I've got money on the books for that. I think there's always hope. I mean, and, and someone always asks me, like, how much long? You know, people always want to quantify things with time or what time, and we've never really asked those questions. And sometimes we've, like, sort of played around with it, but they don't answer it anyway. And I'm glad because this has been two years now, and she's had, you know, for a year and a half was doing so amazing after a few months of, um, you know, not doing so great. So I think there's always hope, and they're making so much progress. So for anyone out there that is going through this, there is a lot of hope and just one day at a time and yeah, I, I feel optimistic. Well, we were sort of having some pictures taken here today. It's been a little exciting. <laughs> They're just so cute together is what we say, you know, but they yeah. um, enjoy each other's company and, and can laugh at each other's, you know, little issues. And so it took him a while to kind of get into a groove and now when he has, something going on that's odd or, you know, they just kind of joke it off and go, hey, we're doing the best we can. And, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's We've all definitely... learned to live in the moment. And they, I think they really have in their relationship, you know, learn to be in the moment. We're here today. He's healthy feeling today. He feels good. He's still doing his stuff. Do you want to play bridge this weekend? Sure. Oh, the about love and support of my family. Tomorrow night? Uh, no, Sunday, like it. And unbelievable. In particular, my wife, uh, my kids, uh, unbelievable. Both of my daughters. Uh, my son has been a big help also uh, remotely from Florida, but I have to give it all to my wife. She stuck with me and uh, we carry on, as they say in the Navy. Thank you.